guys, it's McGann here to happily talk some more about one of the best shows on TV, The Venture Brothers. With the new season being freshly released, I get to say I was right! Half of my previous Venture Brothers theory was proven correct in Season 7, Episode 3. Woo -woo. But I still hear from people regularly who are completely confused about the Guild of Calamitous Intent. I mean, sure, we know it's basically a club that villains join so that they can have an arch nemesis, but uh, why do they exist? Seriously, when Sergeant Hatred was briefly arching Doc Venture, he made it seem like a friendly sparring match where they would be BFFs when not in arching mode. It's just really bizarre to declare a rival, then bring him a gift basket, ask him about his allergies, and then invite him to a party at your house. Well, that's all because even in the context of the series, it's not real. It's all a big game. Basically, the simple answer is that trust fun babies grow up, never have to work, and quickly get bored. So instead of investing their inheritance or becoming a professional philanthropist, they join the guild so that they can manufacture tension, drama, and intrigue into their boring lives. Or, you know, they're people who are so disfigured, like Phantom Limb, that villainy is all they can think to do with themselves now. And because the guild is this big sanctioned thing, that means that being a villain is almost like being an athlete. You have training, rules, conditions, and best of all, a legal release of liability if you kill while arching. No, seriously, most of you may not realize this, but if you're playing a professional sport, say boxing, and you break someone's neck during a fight, you, as the fighter, don't go to jail or have to pay any damages to the family because it was a sporting event that both parties consented to participate in. So everyone is playing at their own risk. Well, okay, let me slightly correct myself. You're not liable for damages as long as you were following the rules. If you're hiding a switchblade in your boxing glove, yeah, you probably just ruined your life. And the guild runs on the exact same premise. That's why there's so much red tape and matching of villains to their enemies. And sure, that makes a lot of sense for the guild members, but wouldn't that mean the quote good guys are agreeing to be arched? Well, yes, yes it would. And I would argue that that is exactly what happens. Notice the Ventureverse isn't just super scientists versus villains. There's also superheroes roaming around too, meaning there are different organizations that each good and bad guy can join and they can compete with each other. So because every quote good guy can't defend themselves, there are protective services where heroes and secret agents join together as a for hire service so that people like Rusty have representation and don't get killed or have their lab destroyed constantly. That's why the knockoff Justice League starts pitching their services to Doc, not realizing he's already signed with OSI, because Doc is an independent contractor that hires a bodyguard service. Now here's where it's interesting. I agree that it would be senseless for someone to sign up as an arch nemesis with the guild. Not only would they be in real danger, but they'd have to pay for another service to keep them safe. Why jump through those hoops? Well, there's actually a real life issue in the science world where there isn't enough funding to go around and most of the cash that is being invested goes to big or dazzling projects that catch a lot of hype. And how would you get hype about your super science projects or get the word out that you're great and people should throw wads of cash at you to create things for them. Hmm, having a villain consistently stalking you, kidnapping you, and causing huge commotions would certainly make you sound like a very important person, especially to the papers. Oh, and you'd obviously be a good guy since the Guild of Calamitous Intent is bad and hunting you down, making your reputation all the better. So more arching equals more press potential equals more projects, more money, and hey, maybe even things like getting a network to pick up a television series you've been producing. And that would bring in tons of merchandise, all which equals tons of money. And we all know that Venture Industries
Industries not only has tons of money, but Rusty grew up with his face slapped on everything. You could easily apply this to superheroes too. Who would Superman be with no one to fight or save? Who would even know his name if he didn't have opportunities to be actively out in the community doing good? The heroes need villains to become public gods. Otherwise, they're just adults in their underwear flirting with reporters. Basically what you see outside of Grauman's Chinese Theater in LA. I mean, even though it's impressive to fly, it's far more impressive to save the day. Overall meaning that the Guild is just a sports organization and publicity service for talented individuals. The fame alone is why Jonas Venture put his name in to receive a villain. But he assembled his own bodyguard team and didn't affiliate with OSI or anyone else. Who knows, maybe Jonas even had plans to start his own defense service, but then he died before getting it fully operational which would cover why Jonas and the Blue Morpho were friends because they were never enemies even though the Blue Morpho was kind of anti-hero bad-ish. It was all one big game of cat and mouse for media attention and Rusty just kept going with it, not knowing what else to do with his life. It might not be reality, but theories are more fun. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I wanna let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.